When we talk about different color modes and color spaces, we often see a graphic like what you're seeing on screen. <clears throat> it appears to be a flat, flat plane that illustrates various colors with the outer parabola being all possible colors and then the triangles or the polygons that you see within represent specific ranges of color within the overall gamut. However, color is a 3D model, not a 2D model. So I want to show you, if you have a Mac, you can follow along. If you have a PC, um, you might want to just watch the video. You can see a 3D representation of different color spaces right on your computer. On a Mac, you're going to go to your applications, scroll to the bottom, and you were looking for, <clears throat> excuse me, color sync utility. It's in the utilities folder and then you're looking for the color sync utility. When you click any of the profiles on the on the left, it will show you a representation of that color space and you can click and drag to see the 3D representation of all the colors that are possible. And so we talk about Adobe RGB 1998 as being the preferred color space in our course because it has the most possible colors. Well, you can see all of what those colors are there. You can compare, well, let's compare it to sRGB. Those are the two we compare most often. You can see that visibly it gets smaller when I click sRGB and bigger when I click Adobe RGB, but sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where the differences are. <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you right click the graph or you hit this little flyout menu, you can say hold for comparison. So I'm holding Adobe RGB 1998 for comparison. It grays it out a little bit and then I can choose any other profile to compare it to. And so the gray area is Adobe RGB 1998. So as I scan around, you can see just how much bigger that color space is compared to sRGB. You can even see that sRGB is poking out in the reds and the pinks area. So sRGB can produce more reds and blues than Adobe RGB can. However, look at how far away the gap is in the greens and the yellows. So you can do this for several different um, color modes. We can compare it to a generic our uh, CMYK profile, so print versus web. And so look how much bigger the RGB color space is compared to the CMYK. That's why anytime we have this nice, bright, vibrant color on screen and we send it to a printer that's printing with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, it tends to look darker. It tends to look muddier. We can't produce as vibrant of colors because all the vibrant colors are out here on the outside and they're not possible. Uh, within the CMYK profile.